Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to call our regular council meeting to order for Tuesday, April 25th, 2023. We have Councilor Lewis joining us via Zoom. Councilor Lewis, can you hear us? I can, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Lewis. Just for the sake of um, process, I will assume you are in favor with, of something unless you speak up and say you are not. Is that going to work for you? That's just great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So with that, we have an agenda in front of us. Mr. Coleman, are there any additions or deletions? No changes from administration, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Belazer will move the agenda as presented. All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, we have meeting minutes from April 11th, 2023. Looking for someone to move those as being correct. Councillor Wanchuk, any changes, errors or omissions? Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. At the beginning of every council meeting, we have an opportunity for anybody of the, on the public who'd like to address the council on an item that is not on the agenda has the ability to do so now. I will call a second time. Anyone in the gallery who would like to address council on an item not on the agenda can do so now. And a third time. Okay, thank you very much. We're gonna move on to Mr. Broadbent and Mr. Honesty uh, for some service awards. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, today, it is my um, true pleasure to recognize D Justin Dumont. Uh, Justin Dumont is a heavy duty mechanic for Leduc County. When Justin started with Leduc County in 2008, he was a welder, um, a ticketed traded welder. And over the years, um, Leduc County identified the need that we needed additional heavy duty mechanics. So Justin did become a red sealed heavy duty mechanic um, for Leduc County last year. So he's a heavy duty mechanic. He's a red seal welder. Uh, and he's also um, an off highway heavy duty mechanic. Um, I appreciate Justin a lot. I appreciate Justin's wit. Um, I appreciate the person. <laughs> I appreciate the person he is, but um, First and foremost, Madam Mayor and Council, I appreciate Justin as, as a father, um, as a dad who is a hockey coach, and as a dad who is a soccer coach. Um, he's a good person. He's a proud Leduc County um, resident. And, and for that, um, I want to recognize Justin for 15 years of service with Leduc County. Congratulations. Thanks so much. Thank you for all the service. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. I'd like to recognize Andrea Yoneski for her. Uh, she's always picking up after me, which is helpful. Uh, for 15 years with Leduc County, uh, obviously councils very well aware and has worked with Andrea on several occasions, uh, providing services for recreation to our residents. And uh, she continues obviously to provide that dedication and improve us and make us better every year uh, in the services that we provide, not only in the direct programs that we do, programs and events, and introducing new ideas and creative ways of um, serving our residents, but also in supporting our not-for-profits, which is obviously a very valuable and vital part of our services. So I guarantee that uh, we always say it's about 50 community groups, and every one of those has a good relationship with Andrea and uh, gets a lot of support from them in, in supporting uh, recreation services in the county. So with that, uh, thank Andrea for her dedication to the county. Congratulations, Andrea. No, Justin, you have to stay for the. He's gone. <laughs> 
he doesn't want me to stay. <laughs> okay, um, we have our public here. I public hearing starting at 1.45, uh, but we are going to jump down to some proclamations. Um, so I'm jumping to 6C1 and 2. So 6C1, Mr. Podluski and Ms. Dusen, come forward. You're uh, actually uh, having the pleasure of having Ms. Alexander here today. Oh, sorry, I just read my... I know, thank you. So thank you, Madam Mayor, Council. Um, we're bringing forth today a recommendation that the county approve uh, three proclamations, one for National Day of Mourning, one for Safety and Health Week, and one for Mental Health Week. As you're aware, the county puts a high priority on health and safety, both internally in the organization and in the public. And this is one of the ways that <laughs> we would like to address uh, that, those, uh, that priority. So the first being National Day of Mourning, uh, it's actually days from now, April 28th, and it's set to pause to take a moment to remember those that have either been injured or killed due to a workplace injury. The second safety, safety and health week is uh, again, nationally recognized, used to, be, used to be the North American Occupational Health and Safety Week, more inclusive being called just uh, Safety and Health Week. And then third, Mental Health Week, of course, a very important part of uh, health and safety. Uh, also recognized uh, uh, for the week, uh, first week of May, and uh, very important that we wish to rec 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 respond to those those days. Any questions on the, the proclamations? I am seeing none. Uh, I think we would have someone read the, or sorry, make the uh, recommendation, Mr. Coleman, and then would we read out the proclamations? Yes, Madam Chair, it'd be appropriate to move uh, approval of the proclamations, and then perhaps, uh, Madam Mayor, you could read out the proclamations. Thank you. So, thank you. Councillor Smith, could you I'll read that? The recommendation that sorry. I'll move the recommendation that Ladue County Council approve the proclamations for the National Day of Mourning, Safety and Health Week, and Mental Health Week, and further that the Mayor read them into the record. <laughs> um, any comments or questions on the motion? Any debate? I'm seeing none. All in favor? That is unanimous. So with that, I will read our first proclamation, which is National Day of Mourning. So whereas the Canadian Labour Congress established April 28th as National Day of Mourning in Canada to remember and honor those who have been who have died, been injured or suffered illness in the workplace. And whereas WCB Alberta recognizes the day and shares to stick statistical information regarding workplace facilities each year and whereas a moment of silence is observed at 11 a.m. in honor of those who have been fatally injured from workplace injury. Now, therefore, on behalf of Council, I, Mayor Tani DeBlanco of Leduc County, do hereby proclaim the day of April 28th, 2023 to be the National Day of Mourning in Leduc County. Thank you. The second proclamation <clears throat> is for Safety and Health Week. <clears throat> Whereas the Safety and Health Week, formerly referred to as the North American Occupational Safety and Health Week, was established in 1996 and recognized by Canada, the United States, and Mexico. And whereas it is an opportunity for organizations across all North American countries to focus on health and safety of their workers, regardless of industry, and whereas is rec and whereas is recognized to begin the first full week of May on behalf of County Council, I, Tani DeBlanco of Leduc County, do hereby proclaim the first week of May 2023 to be National Safety Health Week in Leduc County. Proclamation for Mental Health Week. Whereas every year since 1951, the Canadian Mental Health Association has hosted Mental Health Week in the first week, full week of May, and Mental Health Week is a Canadian tradition with community schools and workplaces rallying to celebrate, protect, and promote mental health. And now, therefore, on behalf of Council, I, Mayor Tani DeBlanco of Leduc County, do hereby proclaim the first week of May 2023 to be National Mental Health Week in Leduc County. So thank you very much uh, for bringing those forward and certainly an opportunity for us to do those recognitions uh, within our own workplace. So thank you. 
And to add that the uh, internal accounting staff will be observing the 11 a.m. Um, moment of silence for the National Day of Mourning as well. Thank you. Thanks. Um, 6C2 is proclamation of emergency preparedness week. And we have Chief Lafave. Madam Mayor and Council, Ladue County would like to acknowledge through proclamation emergency preparedness week, which is May 7th to 13th coming up. Emergency Preparedness Week is a national initiative to increase awareness about individual and family preparedness. Participation of individual municipalities will help raise awareness of emergency preparedness and thereby build more resilient communities. Emergencies can happen anywhere, anytime. During an emergency response, agencies focus their efforts first where the need is greatest. That is why individual emergency preparedness is so important. While most people recognize the importance of being prepared, surveys have shown that less than half take the steps needed to be prepared. Emergency Preparedness Week provides an opportunity to engage Albertans and in our case, Ladue County residents on how to prepare and the opportunity to elaborate on how doing so can reduce the risks and consequences of an emergency. So recommendations that Ladue County staff approve the proclamation for emergency preparedness week. Thank you very much. Any questions for the chief? I am seeing none. Someone want to make the motion? Councillor Verdi will. Uh, if you just read it in. I know I always make you scroll. <laughs> Sorry. Proclamation emergency preparedness week. Whereas. No, just, oh. If I could just the motion. Oh, sorry. That's okay. The chief read it, but that uh, the move the motion that Leduc County approve the proclamation for emergency preparedness week. Questions, debate. I'm seeing none. All in favor? Thank you. That's unanimous. And our proclamation is emergency, whereas emergency preparedness week is a national initiative held annually for over 25 years, supported by Public Safety Canada, provincial and territorial emergency management organizations, non-governmental organizations, and private sector organizations who support activities at the local level. And whereas it is a national initiative to increase awareness about individual and family preparedness, thereby building more resilient communities. And whereas it is tr traditionally takes place during the first week of May, now therefore on behalf of council, I, Mayor Tani de Blanco of Leduc County, do hereby proclaim the week of May 7th to 13th, 2023 to be Emergency Preparedness Week in Leduc County. Thank you, Chief. And again, it does give up people an opportunity to, to become a bit more resilient and take a look at how well they are prepared. Yes, thank you for your ongoing support. We have a number of events planned for that week for information. Have thank a great day. You. Thank you very much. Okay, we're at 143. I'm looking for some advice from county manager or just to let the planning set up for a couple minutes or madam chair never start early but you can start late <laughs> so i would uh, recess for a couple minutes so we're just going to recess until 1 45 we can ask planning staff to come forward and set up while we're having a quick recess and our next item is uh, 5a which is the public hearing for between the county of Leduc and the village of warburg
Okay, we're good. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Coleman. Uh, we are starting with the public hearing, correct? Or are we doing a report first? Uh, public hearing, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. So I'm going to call our public hearing to order at 147. Um, and the purpose of the public hearing is uh, to replace and repeal um, Ladue County Village of Warburg Intermunicipal Development Plan and to repeal bylaw number 3019 Intermunicipal Collaboration Framework between Ladue County and the Village of Warburg. Council is here to listen to the information presented and make a decision on the matter that is the, uh, the subject of the hearing. This is a formal hearing and not a debate. Everyone wishing to speak <clears throat> who has pre-registered will be given an opportunity to speak once on the matter as called on by myself. Each presenter must state their full name, his or her full name, address, interest in the matter, whether they are in support or not support. Individuals who do not, do not identify themselves will not be given an opportunity to speak. Presenters are asked to stay within a five minute time limit of their presentation and are encouraged when possible to refrain from restating points raised by previous speakers. If the presentation materials are provided, if new presentations materials are provided, pardon me, you may be required to email a copy to our legislative coordinator. With that, I will call on Ms. Johnson and Mr. Evans to introduce the hearing of this afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Council. LaDuke County and the Village of Warburg work collaboratively with input from the community to prepare an intermunicipal development plan and an intermunicipal collaboration framework in 2019. In keeping with the provisions of the IDP and the ICF to review these documents every four years, the Joint Intermunicipal Liaison Committee reviewed and endorsed revisions to the IDP and ICF for consideration by the respective councils. Given the extent of work undertaken in 2019, the revisions were housekeeping in nature. On March 14th, the Village of Warburg Council gave first reading to repeal and replace the Leduc County Village of Warburg IDP and repeal the ICF between Leduc County and the Village of Warburg. Yesterday, the Village of Warburg Council held a public hearing to repeal and replace the IDP and repeal the ICF. No written or oral submissions were received at the public hearing, and therefore the Village of Warburg Council gave second and third reading to repeal and replace the IDP and repeal the ICF. On March 14th, Leduc County Council gave first reading to repeal and replace the Leduc County Village of Warburg IDP and repeal bylaw 3019, the ICF between Leduc County and the Village of Warburg. The public hearing was advertised in the local paper in accordance with Leduc County policy and in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Government Act. The two bylaws, by, bylaw 0423 to repeal and replace the Leduc County Village of Warburg IDP and bylaw 0523 to repeal bylaw number 3019, the ICF between Leduc County and Village of Warburg were made available on the county's website. To date, no responses to the notice of public hearing have been received. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for administration at this time? <clears throat> I am seeing none and uh, we received no information today as well, Ms. Johnson? No, we have not received any submissions at all. Okay. Um, are there any registered speakers, Ms. Gavin? There are no registered speakers. Is there anyone today in our audience that would wish wishes to address council during the public hearing? Call a second time. Anyone want to address council in the public hearing? And a third time. There is no one. With that, um, any further any questions at all for our administration? I am seeing none. Uh, you have any closing remarks? Ms. Johnson? No closing remarks. Thank you. With that, I will close the public hearing at 1.51 p.m. And uh, Council, we are now looking to um, repeal second and third reading uh, bylaw 0523. Nope, 0423. Looking for second reading. Councillor Belazer will move second reading on that bylaw. 
Any comments or questions? All in favor? Unanimous. And third reading on that bylaw, bylaw number 0423. Councillor Wanchuk will move that. Comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. Okay, the second part is to give second and third reading on bylaw 0523, which is repealing the intermunicipal collaboration framework between Leduc County and the village of Warburg. Someone move second reading, Councillor Scobie. All in favor? And third reading, Councillor Verdi, thank you very much. All in favor? Okay, so now we move to adopt bylaw. Ooh. No, help me out where I am, Mr. Coleman. Oh, um, yeah. Where's Madam that? Chair, if I may, yep. it uh, is to approve the intermunicipal collaboration framework between Leduc County and Village of War. Yeah. Right. So, um, Instead of having to do bylaws which create public hearings that's been agreed to by the town of Warburg and ourselves that any changes or anything we're going to do with these collaboration framework and the intermunicipal development framework is going to be by resolution. And that's what we would be moving now. Is that correct? Do we have some inter are there words for that up there? Number four? Yeah. I will move number four. Subject to the adoption of bylaw 0523 to repeal bylaw 3019, the intermunicipal collaboration framework between Leduc County and the village of Warburg, council approved by resolution the updated intermunicipal collaboration framework between Leduc County and the village of Warburg. So moved, comments or questions? Jenny. Just want to make a comment that we will continue to work with the documents that we have with the town of Warburg. This simplify, simplifies the process. We continue to have a good working relationship uh, with the council and the administration of the town and know that they provide services that are necessary for our citizens as we do for theirs. So we will continue the hard work that we're doing together. <clears throat> Comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're on to Ms. Klamosko and Ms. Bryce, 6A1. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. So this afternoon, the first report I have for consideration for mm -hmm. Council is a recommendation to approve the 2023 final budget uh, with total expenses of 100 $26,123,065, which is comprised of $93,189,051 in operating expenses and $32,934,014 of capital expenses. So the budget process began in late uh, 2022 with an interim budget being approved in late November of last year. So with the final budget, we look for any adjustments that are required from that point in time to what is required to complete our county operations um, in 2023. So we have a package of documents uh, for Council's review and consideration today. So with that, I will just start going through the, the various documents with you. If you have any questions as we proceed, please um, let me know what those questions are and we'll do our best to answer them. So the one piece that I would like to speak to in advance of going into the consolidated budget is just that Leduc County um, did realize a significant growth in assessment from 2022 to 2023. We went from $8.62 billion to $9.24 billion, which is a 7.24% increase in assessment this year. This is substantially more than what we saw last year at this time, where we saw an increase of 2% in assessment at this time last year. So I just wanted to highlight that point before I move into the budget documents. So the first uh, document that we have in the package for council's consideration is just some high level consolidated documents that we roll everything together up 
for council's review. So we have here revenues and expenses. So we have the operating expenses of 93.189051 for operating fund expenses and capital fund expenditures of the 32 million, which I spoke about in the recommendation. So this is bringing all of the reports and consolidating it up to that highest level. So going into the next document in the package, it breaks down the operating fund component of the budget. So the operating fund um, is to cover the day-to-day -day operations of the of Leduc County. So this um, is comprised of looking at this information in a couple of different ways. So in the top banner of this um, document, you have the expenditures broken down by the type of expenditure, whereas on the left-hand first column, you're able to see the breakdown of the expenses by department as well. So this just details out um, more information that makes up that $93.1 million in operating fund expenditures. Are there any questions on this summary? Any questions on the summary? Okay. So moving to to the next capital fund budget. So this uh, same type of format as the operating fund, you'll see um, the type of expenditure at the top. Capital fund expenditures are investments in assets that have a, a life longer than a one year period. So you'll see the type of expenses um, and the type of revenue at the top of, of this summary. And then again, the departments that are incurring those expenditures on the left-hand first column. So again, this just breaks down in more detail um, the total capital fund expenses. The one note I will make is that in these schedules, we do speak to the amortization of our capital assets, which is just uh, over seven, sixteen point seven million dollars. This is not an expense that we need to fund as a municipal government. So we don't actually put uh, money to fund amortization. So we do remove it from um, our expenditures in that summary on the right hand side of this document, just to come up with the capital expenses of thirty two point nine million dollars. I have uh, two questions, if I wait, May Ms. Kamasto. Number one, under long-term debentures, engineering has nine million. I'm assuming they're holding that uh, on behalf of a, of a large project. Yes, that's correct. So typically when we do a project that is um, managed by a certain department, we have assigned the debenture to that department who oversaw the construction of that asset. So ultimately anything that's within um, that column is debenture borings held on behalf of Leduc County. We just have assigned it to a department who oversaw the construction. Thank you. And con conditional grants, are those mostly provincial and federal grants from other schools? So in a, con a conditional grant is something that there is an action we must meet in order to get the funds. So that can be comprised of um, both federal and provincial. I think in this case, it would be provincial as we don't have a federal capital grant um, in 2023. Thank you. Any further questions on the 2023 capital fund budget page? I'm okay. seeing none. Move on. All right. So the next schedule in your package is the 2023 final municipal tax dollars required. So this is a summary that tells us all of the tax dollars that we need to collect to meet all of our obligations. So part of that $79 million um, are funds that we collect on behalf of the government of Alberta and the Leduc Housing Foundation. So you'll see that there's um, a reduction for the requisition. So these are funds that we collect on their behalf and ultimately just pay out directly to them. So that's the $26.9 million on the schedule. So when we take off that number, as well as the local improvement tax, so a local improvement tax is tax dollars collected from specific <laughs> landowners in the county that benefited from some type of infrastructure um, enhancement or build that it was specifically for an area. So we collect local improvement taxes. So we will collect just that over $1.1 million for local improvement taxes. So if we take those $2 off, we have a total proposed municipal tax dollars budget of the $51 million. So 
earlier I spoke to the growth in assessment that we've experienced in um, coming into 2023. So that growth in assessment is going to give Leduc County additional tax dollars of just over $3 million. So when we factor in that uh, growth amount in additional tax dollars, then we have the tax dollars required from our 2022 assessment base, which is the 47.9 million. So that is a 3% tax dollar budget increase required on our 2022 assessment. Any questions on that page? Councillor Smith. I just wanted to make a couple of comments. When we went through this budget, we realized that this was an investment year that we did need to put infrastructure in. The 7% growth in assessment that you uh, highlighted today occurs because we're ahead of the game in our investment in our infrastructure. And again, with the 510 construction, fire hall construction, those are things that are needed to continue to support the growth that we're seeing. And again, when you look at the growth in, in assessment of 7%, I mean, that is data that comes back to tell us that we're in the right areas. We're targeting money, which is part of our strategic plan to where the infrastructure should be going. So again, um, I want to commend administration for a good year uh, of investing in infrastructure, investing in the county and better positioning us for further growth, um, which I assume will continue uh, well beyond other municipalities in the area. Thank you for that. Uh, and again, the budget, uh, the data in the budget just shows that we're definitely on the right track with our investments. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Well said. Any further comments? I am seeing none. Okay. So on page 85 of your package, we have the tax dollar requirement. So again, this just provides the breakdown in a little bit more detail of all of the tax dollars where it is being utilized. So it's just um, breaking down the information in a different way just to provide additional information to that requirement. So going into the next page. This is, you have your, on page 87, the adjustment summary from 2023 interim approved to final budget. So this is where we have captured every um, item that we want to adjust in the budget um, so that we can get to our final approved budget today. So we have started with the amount that was approved in November uh, at the interim budget. And then the two pieces that happen throughout the year end process is, process is the first two lines of this summary. So this is where we bring in all of um, the carry forward projects. So the projects that weren't completed in 2022, we bring those forward into 2023 so the work can be completed. So we had two um, adjustments there, one for major projects and capital projects. In the blue font on this adjustment summary, we have proposed some new projects for Council's consideration today. So we, I will go through those um, in a little bit more detail. So we have a county centre renovation design project, so to do some additional work, uh, some design work to inform some renovations in 2024. Then moving on to enterprise content management, this is uh, a project that's made up of three significant projects within it. So that would be our permitting system, our records management system, and a customer relationship management system. So with this change within this project, uh, we have selected a vendor for our permitting system. We will see increased functionality um, in order to be able to provide a better customer service experience in terms of the ability for our businesses and residents to actually uh, make application through online processes. And so we that is a, a change here. One thing I would like to highlight within this project is we also changed funding sources. So we had received some grant dollars from Prairies Can in 2022 to fund the construction of our next phase of the Nisku Spine Road. We completed that project on time and under budget. So Prairies Can uh, allowed Leduc County to keep the remaining grant dollars that were not utilized for the Nisku Spine Road project and apply it to another project that would um, have economic development impact for the county. So those grant dollars of over $200,000 uh, were applied to this uh, project, specifically to the permitting software uh, transition. Any questions on that project? Uh, any questions? 
I don't have a question, just a comment. And it's really um, a thank you to our administration. You know, the fact that Prairies Can has said, uh, you came in under budget and we'll allow you to reapply that dollars to another project. And I, and I believe, you know, this is a good application of that money for looking at economic development because stepping back even farther, the money has come from the Just Coal Transition Fund. So it really is about uh, encouraging and trying to support new economic development in the county. So, you know, congratulations to our um, administration for having a good relationship with Prairies Can and being able to report in a way that they have trust that the money is going again to be reinvested in a good area for economic development. So thank you for that. Thank you. So going to the next number of lines um, within the budget adjustment summary, project profile documents uh, were included within the package to council. So are there any specific questions around any of those, those um, next projects before we go into the other adjustments? Any questions on the financial software review, land use bylaw update, NISCU and East Vista's utilities capacity assessment or the Sunnybrook flush point installation? <coughs> Um, just a question on the uh, NISCU and East Vista's utilities capacity assessment. We're looking at water and wastewater there, I believe. Those are actually utilities that we manage in the county of Leduc. But we have had conversations or, or having conversations around other utilities like power. Can someone comment on how we're managing with those? Mr. Grayston, perhaps? Yeah, that study is strictly related to the county's utilities, so it'll be focused on uh, on sewer. As far as uh, the other utilities, natural gas and power in particular, we're holding separate conversations uh, with those companies that have uh, access here in the county. And so far, those we've had three meetings and they've all gone quite well. So we're making progress. Thank you for that. And again. Part of our investment readiness that we heard Councillor Smith talk about is making sure that we have utilities in the right place in the right amount for businesses that want to settle. It's good to hear we're having meetings and that they're going well. I see no other questions, Ms. Klamosko. Oh, comment. Thank you. Um, I just want to make a comment on your land use bylaw update and your business case. Uh, the uh, old one was adopted in 2008, is now 15 years old and subject to significant amendments and alteration. I noticed the price line that you have uh, for 2023 is $18,000. Can you confirm that that money will be for public engagement, advertising and open house to hear from our public? So it's a very transparent uh, process by the looks of what you have going on here, looking to our residents to know exactly what we're doing and the reasons why, again, a document being um, 15 years old and all the changes that have come through and requirements that we need to change us. So that money is going specifically for public engagement and advertising. So yes, I can confirm that the budget dollars being asked for 2023 are specifically for public participation. And Madam just, Chair. Go ahead. Thank you. Can you, Ms. Kromosko, just talk about the removal of the wildlands uh, subdivision paving project. I see it's a $1.2 million removal. Can you just comment on the specifics of that removal, please? Yes, I can. So we were um, given two petitions by the residents of the Wildland Meadows um, subdivision to do two pieces of work um, for th that area. So one was for a uh, sewer uh, system, a communal system, and then a roadway service surfacing project. So once we were served those petitions, we investigated uh, what would be needed to construct um, those two different pieces of infrastructure. And then we went back with a local improvement plan to the residents to inform them of the cost to do these two projects. So the residents of Wildland Meadows Repetitioned us to remove um, the roadway component, so that second component. So they are we are proceeding with a local improvement on the uh, sewer system, but we are removing the roadway project from consideration as we've been petitioned to remove it. 
Thank you. Thank you. If I may ask one more question. The floor is yours, Councilor Lewis. Thank you. Your project profile MP018 for the Hamlet. Um, I can't remember what the name of it. Sorry. Uh, just a question if there is consideration for if these programs are not in place already for the, the lagoons that exist in the hamlets, is that part of the future plan? So that project 2023 MP018 is the Sunnybrook Flush Point installations. So the expectation would be that our engineering group um, is monitoring the functioning of our lagoon systems and if needed then, you know, potentially there would be work done in other lagoons if flush points are not installed and are required. Thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Belazer. Yeah, I was just going to comment on that. This, this really doesn't have a whole lot to do with the lagoon itself. This has to do with the system right in Sunnybrook that never was built, that never did have flush points in it. Now, some of the residents have been building or installing larger pump stack to get their products to move. And, and so um, it's got to the point where something has to be done soon. So it does lead to the lagoon, but this is right in Sunnybrook. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. I'm correct on that. Seeing no other hands. All right. So going to the next section of the report, we have other adjustments, uh, capital projects. So we have summarized here uh, various changes that are needed. Um, so really, the, the first bridge program is, is due to tenders being finalized and some grant funding becoming available. So we're changing some funding sources there within the motor grader replacements. This was a uh, report that went to council in January around uh, costs to replace the motor grader. So it's bringing those impacts into the budget um, as well as then we had um, a project profile document included for the land expropriation for Nisku Spine Road. So that was for the first phase of the Nisku Spine Road. So some costs associated with that expropriation. The next line, the Nisku District South Fire uh, Station, I wanted to speak to this one. When we had approved the budget at interim in November, we had funded the construction uh, solely with uh, reserve funding. So this is bringing in tax dollar funding um, into uh, the budget at final. So just wanted to uh, indicate that there was no change to the project cost of the $7.85 million uh, for the construction, rather just a change in funding source. So moving to the next uh, couple of lines again, um, the road program, it's due to now knowing finalized tender amounts and to also use a, another type of funding source, which is some deposits that we had available to us. So then we have the next one is the Royal Oaks Estates infrastructure deficiencies. Again, a lot of these changes that you're seeing within these sections have to do with funding being available to us to be able to change some funding sources. And then the last line in this section was uh, the project related to Councillor Lewis's question about the roadway surfacing project. So that again was removed um, on March 28th due to the petition from the residents. So so then moving into the next section of the adjustment summer, we have changes to operating, um, operating budgets. So here again, uh, we brought in some carry forward dollars from 2022 budget. So that's $20,000. And then the next um, number is really around bringing in various funding sources. So we had some grant funding dollars that we were able to bring in for uh, Albert, like from Alberta Environmental Sustainable Agriculture, the Agricultural Services Board Grant, and then the Bridges Program for our Family Community and Support Services Program. Then the next line is just now that we have opened our Business and Entrepreneur Center, we we looked at the need to adjust some of our operating costs because now we have people in the facility, whereas last year it it was primarily vacant. So we're just doing some budget adjustments to better align what we're expecting to see in terms of utilities and different pieces. Then again, um, we have a couple of grant dollars that um, 
become became available. So we did some funding changes. The one next line that I'd like to highlight was would be around fuel. So again, uh, we did some analysis on uh, what we had included in budget for fuel costs. We're seeing um, increases within um, the price for fuel. So this is looking at bringing in additional dollars to account for the increases we expect to see uh, in 2023. So then the next line is just again, a credit that we received for some orphan well uh, properties. So that's a, an additional funding source. Then the next line is for WCB premiums. We did an analysis and we did need to do an increase to our insurable earnings. And also there was an increase to the 2023 premium rate, which results in that $100,000 impact to our operating budget. The next item is a slight increase for our city of Leduc tax share to meet uh, the requirements of that agreement. And then um, a transfer to reserves. So as part of our agreement in our joint venture with the city of Leduc for Leduc Transit, of which Leduc County is uh, the owner of 33% of the transit service, we made commitments that we would put dollars in reserves for future bus replacements. So this contribution to reserves will just, um, we had paused making contributions to the reserve when we were, the region was undergoing the examination of a regional transit system that has now um, ceased to exist. So now we're just putting dollars into reserve to meet that future capital investment requirement of buses in the future. And, and again, looking at transit, we are continuing to work with the city of Leduc and looking at perhaps creating some sort of smaller sub-regional transit to support not only ourselves and the city of Leduc, but our neighbours and will continue to work. Councillor Lazar? Yeah, transit and putting money in reserve for buses. We've been doing this for a number of years now, have we not? Yes. So what, what we do is um, when we made the initial investment for the buses, it's looking at the life cycle of those buses and saying in order to have the money set aside so that in, you know, I'm not sure ex if the exact life cycle, I'll say 10 years, that if we put X amount of dollars away every year in 10 years, we're going to have the funds easily available to us in reserve to be able to buy a new bus to replace the old fleet. So that is just putting money aside as these assets are used and start um, their, their life cycle reduces. It allows us to have the money available to replace them. So then the next line within the adjustment summary is a change to earnings and benefits. So this is not a cost to our tax dollar budget. This is um, a position that we will recover the cost through uh, utility fees. So it is to support an external service agreement and the additional work that is required in that area. And then finally, the next section is all um, outlining the requisitions that we collect on behalf of the government of Alberta and the Leduc Regional Housing Foundation. So with all of those uh, changes, we have a tax impact of just over $1.8 million. And again, there's the box that um, outlines the municipal tax dollars required, the amounts required for local improvement levies and requisitions for that total tax dollars required of this just over $79 million. Okay, thank you for explaining those adjustments. All right. Where to now, Ms. Kamalski? Okay, so uh, the next sections, we will go to the reserve schedules. So page 102 of 422. So we have our operating fund reserve schedule. So this um, just outlines what we were, are going to utilize and what we are expecting to receive in um, our operating fund reserve schedule. So we are proposing to use, um, just netting the applied in additions, $8.5 million. 
primarily what is being used within this reserve schedule is the funds for the construction of the fire station at the Edmonton International Airport site, as well as uh, a land purchase that was done uh, earlier in the year. And so that at the end of 2023, it's proposed that we will have a balance of $18.3 million in our operating fund reserve. And um, Ms. Klamosko, is that sufficient for a, a organization of our size? Is it within a range or Mr. Coleman, whoever wants to respond? Well, well I would say that um, we have, when you look at stabilization and contingency, maybe as one key component of this, we have $5.2 million in uh, that account. So it does allow for dollars to be available if unexpected um, things arise for us. Rainy day fund. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Um, so on the reserve uh, schedule, which is money you've saved over the years, um, you're actually paying cash for the fire hall over most of it in cash for the fire hall. And you're not taking a debenture out then where normally that would have been a debentured purchase. Uh, instead, we've had the cash to do it. And that is the money that's the bulk of what's being spent out of the reserves. Yes, that would be correct. So uh, we made the decision that because we are in a favorable cash position as a municipality that uh, we didn't need to debenture cost that fire hall that we did have the cash balances available to us to be able to draw from our reserves uh, to be able to fund that fire station. Follow up, Councillor? Yes, again, uh, thank you for that. Be, as we all know, if you had debentured that over 25 years, there would have been some sust substantial interest charges as well. So again, money that was tucked away that was needed, paying the cash out and saving interest over 25 years on a major bill is, is a good move. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the next schedule is the capital fund reserve schedule. So again, when you uh, look at the small box at the bottom that nets out the applied and the additions, we are looking to be drawing just 3.9, just over $3.9 million from the capital reserve. So the ending balance at the end of 2023 will be just over $18.3 million. Seeing none. Okay. All right. So now going, I just want to um, demonstrate on the major project plan. Yep, acceptable. Yep. Go ahead. Uh, again, looking at your utility reserves, I know there was a small amount in reserves 10 years ago. And um, because you've gone through rework the utilities over the last 10 years with tucking away reserve money from uh, from the rate payers, uh, it was user paid. Uh, it's nice to see that we actually have the cash and reserves to pay for the projects and we're not borrowing money as we were before. So another good move to, um, to again, change the rates that were sustainable to put away money in reserve to do the work that we need and not have to keep going back and borrowing has really stabilized the utilities. Thank you for that. Thank you. So going to the major project plan, if we can go to the detailed sheets, I just wanted to outline uh, the major project plan and, and the various components just so council can see um, the transition. 106, go ahead. Okay, so really what you'll see on, on these two plans, on the major and the capital project plan, is it's broken down into three sections. So you'll have the interim major projects. So that first section is what council approved within our interim budget back in November. Then the next section is carry forward projects. So those were the carry forwards that council approved through council motion through our year end processes. So we could finalize 2022 year end. And then the final section are the adjustments that we went through within our adjustment summary. So then it just shows all of the changes that occurred within the major project plan to come up with that total final budget. So what we'll do once we transition to quarterly reporting is some of these things consolidate together, but it just shows a clear breakdown of how kind of these three steps of process that we do um, ends up with this changed major project plan. 
Thank you for that. And absolutely, council is uh, kept abreast and helping make the decisions um, all the way through the process. There is no surprises for any of us on any of these sheets, and we appreciate the time provided to do that. So then the same type of breakdown exists for the capital project plan. My, It's not my intent to go through this in detail, but if there are any questions on the major or capital project plan, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions on those two plans? Again, absolutely information we've seen at least five, maybe six times. So we are familiar with it. Okay. So now going to page 114 of your package, we have tax implications. So again, um, with the mill rates that we're proposing, with the budget that we're proposing, um, this schedule in your agenda package just summarizes from a non-residential and a residential perspective what um, our rate payers can expect in terms of changes to their tax notices. So they're, they're outlined there in the two different figures. And then going to page 115 of the package, we have a mill rate comparison. So you'll see this is for 2022 um, property tax year. So this is not the 2023 mill rates, but I will highlight for from the residential perspective, we have Leduc County in 2022 was 2.97. That will remain for 2023. Uh, the non-residential component um, is increasing by 3% and it is 6.7%. So again, very competitive uh, in the region. And then farmland, again, up by 3%. So that would be a 12.8% or 12.8 mil rate for municipal. So that is just some information for council for some comparative purposes. Thank you. Um, and so we're looking at a 3% tax increase um, across all residential, non-residential, in order to meet our plans of operating and capital that we have so far. But individual landowners, property owners, business owners will see different fluctuations depending as well on the assessment on their property. Is that correct? That would be correct. Every uh, rate payer in the county situation will be unique to them. Uh, and so that is why it, it is challenging to be able to generically tell everybody that this is exactly what you can expect. However, um, you know, there, we can with certainty tell you what the, the mill rates are, but we can also say that based with our growth and what our budget requirement is, that that 3% is a reasonable um, amount to be looking to expect in terms of a budget dollar, tax dollar budget increase. That's why page 114 is important because it shows the range of what uh, business owners or residents would see either a decrease or a, an increase depending on those two numbers put together, correct? Yes, and so just to give council um, some information that we're preparing to go as tax inserts with our tax notices, just to summarize those two tables together, 83% of our rate payers in the county will see um, under a $100 increase or a decrease to their tax notice this year. Well, and that's, that's, that's pretty spectacular when you consider that we had 7.5% uh, rollback a couple of years ago due to COVID and the economy, and we've continued to build to attract and retain businesses. We're continuing to um, invest in our infrastructure, all of those types of things. I think uh, it's a great, it's a good news story. It's a good budget. It places us well for continued investment and opportunities for to move and live here in the county. Yes, so just to add to that, so um, in, with a little bit more detail in 2020, we saw a decrease of 4%. And in 2021, we saw a 3.5% decrease to our tax dollar budget. So over a period of four years, our tax dollar budget has increased 3.69%. Uh, thank you for that hard work to our administration. Um, I know that it means that you've said no to lots of projects or lots of ideas that were brought forth by your administration. 
but overall it is the best decision for our residents and our business owners in Leduc County. So thank you for that. Thank you. So with that, unless there are further questions around the final budget, uh, I would like to um, ask council to consider the recommendation for them. Thank you very much. Just going back up to the top of my reports. Um, someone looking for someone to move the motion, the recommendation on our budget. Councillor Smith, go ahead. That Ladue County Council give first, second, and third reading of the 2023 property tax bylaw. Hang on. Just oh, sorry. Back, uh, ah, the there we go. <laughs> I can see it. That Ladue County Council approve the 2023 final budget with total expenditures of $126,123,065, which is comprised of $93,189,051 in operating expenses and $32,934,014 of capital expenses. Well read. I can Any comments, questions, or debate on that motion? I am seeing none, so I will call the question. All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Now we have to go into our tax bylaw, correct? Yes. So just one, one note in advance of going to the bylaw. I just wanted to inform council of the tax inserts that we are putting in with the tax notices. So I spoke to, we will break down um, similar to what we've done in the past, kind of where your municipal dollars are going, that breakdown of that 83% and how, what this means to people. So similar to what we've done in, in previous years, um, we have an ability to do a second sheet of inserts. So on that second sheet, we'll talk about the tax installment payment plan. So again, to encourage participation in that program, as well as uh, mark your calendars for the 2023 Citizen Satisfaction Survey. So that will be coming out later in May. So we want for everybody to be aware that this is coming um, and that to expect it in their mailboxes. Thank you. And just um, to clarify, all of our uh, budget meetings that have led up to this have been public. That information <coughs> resides on our website. This information, if you needed more information or wanted more information about uh, where the money has gone, be it capital or operating, all of this is public. It is on our website. You can look into it. If you still have questions about your budget, about your taxes, you can always reach out. Um, to the county, correct? There's no issues with that. That is correct. Um, and just because it seems to not be really clear, when is when are taxes due? June thirtieth. June thirtieth. Taxes are June third. June thirtieth. So each and every year, madam. Each and it has not changed. Um, June thirtieth is tax day. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So what we would be looking at oh. is uh, first reading to the 2023 property tax bylaw. Looking some, for someone to move that. Councillor Scoby will move first reading. Comments or questions? Debate? All in favor? That is unanimous. Looking for someone to move second reading. Councillor Belazer will move second reading on our 2023 property tax bylaw. I'm seeing no hands. Councillor uh, Lewis, uh, any comments or questions? Not at this time, thank you. Thank you very much. All in favor? That is unanimous. Third reading in the same day. Councillor Verdi, thank you. And again, this needs to be a unanimous uh, vote. All in favor? That is. And third reading on our 2023 property tax bylaw. I'd move for, for a third reading, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor Lewis. All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and we did see the pile of books brought in by Ms. Klamosko. So we know it has been a lot of work for all of our managers and all of our staff. And on behalf of council and our residents, thank you very much for that work. Thank you for your patience in answering every single one of our questions over the six months that it takes us to do that. It is really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, moving ahead to uh, 6B, which is Planning and, and Development, Town of Kelmar, into Municipal Plan and Framework. Mr. Evans and Ms. Johnson. And then you'll be continuing on with the Town of Thorsby with the same. Whenever you're set up and ready to go.
Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. In 2019, LaDuke County and the Town of Calmore work, worked collaboratively with input from the community to prepare an IDP and an ICF to comply with the Municipal Government Act. A provision of those documents requires LaDuke County and the Town of Calmar to review these every four years. In accordance with this requ requirement, the Joint uh, Intermunicipal Liaison Committee met on February 27th to review the IDP and ICF. At that time, the Joint Intermunicipal Liaison Committee endorsed for approval by the respective councils the revisions identified in the red line versions of the IDP and the ICF that are attached to your report. The revisions are housekeeping in nature. At the request of the Intermunicipal Liaison Committee, the proposed amendments to the IDP and the ICF were posted on the respective municipalities website for the last two weeks of March, inviting any residents and stakeholders to contact the representatives of the respective municipalities should they have any questions regarding the proposed amendments. Neither municipality received any inquiries. If council agrees with the proposed revisions to the IDP endorsed by the Joint Intermunicipal Liaison Committee, administration recommends council give first reading to repeal and replace the Leduc County Town of Calmar IDP. And if council agrees with the proposed revisions to the ICF endorsed by the Joint Liaison, Liaison Committee, administration recommends council give first reading to repeal the ICF. Once the, the ICF is repealed, administration will present the updated ICF to council for approval by resolution to streamline future reviews of the ICF. Any questions? I am seeing none. Um, and on behalf of the committee, um, again, the they were very uh, minor housekeeping items and our meeting with the town of Kalmar went well and uh, they agreed as well that these were very small um, changes. So looking for someone to move first reading. Councillor, um, Wanchuk will move first reading to repeal and replace Leduc County Town of Kalmar Intermunicipal Development Plan. Any questions on that? And again, Ms. Um, Johnson, we're still going to work with the Town of Kalmar. This is not changing our working relationships at all, correct? No, this doesn't change any policies or working relationships. In fact, in four years, we'll be back at the table because that's what's in the IDP and ICF. Okay, thank you. So going to call the question, all in favor of first reading? That is unanimous. The second part is to repeal bylaw 2019. First reading, um, and by bylaw, adopt the intermunicipal collaboration framework. Someone to move that? Councillor Birdie will. All right. Questions, comments? I am seeing none. All in favor? So there are your two first readings. Thank you. We will move to our next item on our agenda 6B2, which is the Town of Thorsby IDP and ICF. Thank you, Madam Chair. Similar to uh, the Town of Calmore, um, the Leduc County and, and Town of Thorsby worked collaboratively in 2019 with input from the community to prepare an ICF and an IDP to comply with the Municipal Government Act. And as mentioned, um, there is a provision in these documents that requires that they be reviewed every four years. In accordance with this requirement, the Joint Intermunicipal Liaison Com Committee met on April uh, the 6th to review the IDP and the ICF. At that time, the Intermunicipal Liaison Committee endorsed for approval by the respective councils the revisions identified to the red line versions of the IDP and the ICF that are in your package. <coughs> If council agrees with these revisions to the IDP and to the ICF, administration recommends that council give first reading, um, A, to repeal 
and replace the IDP and B to repeal the ICF so that we can streamline future um, reviews of the ICF and approve it um, through resolution at a future date. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Johnson, any questions? <coughs> I am seeing none. Um, I'll actually give first reading to repeal and replace uh, Leduc County Town of Thorsby Intermunicipal Development Plan. So the motion is on the for the reading is on the floor. Comments, questions? All in favor? That is unanimous. All right, looking for someone to move first reading on the bylaw to repeal bylaw 1919 and adopt intermunicipal collaboration for. Councillor Scobie, thank you very much. Comments, questions, debate? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you for all the hard work. The amount of time it takes to move these is much less than the time of, that it takes to put together the reports, read them through, meet, set up meetings, get the feedback. So we really appreciate the work that you've put into this on behalf of council. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, we are moving down to 6B3, which is a direct control application permit, and Ms. Haverland will be leading this for us. Whenever you're ready. Just be a couple of minutes, Madam Chair. Kayla is going to be presenting. Kayla, whenever you're ready, just let us know. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Council. Leduc County Planning and Development brings forth an application for a direct control development permit to consider the continuation of a firewood processing business with outdoor storage. The subject pro property is located on the east side of Range Road at 225 and is approximately 8.7 kilometers southwest of the city of Leduc. And it is also approximately two kilometers west of Highway 2 and two kilometers south of the Glen Park Road. The subject property is located at Southwest 29 48 25th west of the 4th meridian with a tidal area of 24.24 acres of land. The direct control district is affecting approximately 3.7 hectares of land, which is equal to 9.14 acres. The remaining area of the subject parcel is zoned as agricultural lands. In 2017, Leduc County Council adopted through bylaw the Direct Control District DC 024, which allows for the operation of firewood processing. According to the information provided in the development permit application D17286, prior to the Direct Control District being granted, this business had been operating for nine or more years. In 2017, the business was permitted and has been operating under its most recent development permit for the last five years. As outlined in the Leduc County Land Use Bylaw, other uses of the direct control district include accessory building, outdoor storage, and frame and fab fabric structure. The site plan illustrates four frame and fabric structures an accessory building labeled as a pole shed and an office trailer, which includes a washroom. The site plan also indicates that the remainder of the direct control district is to be used as outdoor storage. The business proposes to maintain the same hours of operation as what was previously approved, which are from April 1st to October 31st, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Saturdays, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then from November, First to March 31st, the hours are 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. During the summer, the business expects two customer visits per day. However, they have indicated that this drops noticeably during the winter months. The business currently employs 10 people. 
This is a photograph of the entrance sign taken from a southward uh, vantage point. This is structure A as indicated on the site plan. This structure is for uh, bundling. It's the storage of bundled firewood. Structure B is also for the storage of bundled firewood. Structure C is also for bundled firewood. And this similarly is taken from an eastward direction. Structure D here is the pole shed. This photograph was taken from an east southeast vantage point. Structure E is of the office trailer and washroom facility. Structure F is a building used for the storage of uh, split wood prior to it being bagged. As part of the referral process, the application was referred to 22 adjacent landowners, which two adjacent landowners provide comment, which are contained within the report. These comments expressed concerns relating to traffic and weed control on the lands. Additionally, the application was referred to Leduc County internal departments and other external agencies. No concerns were noted through this referral process. As previously noted, this development received a temporary five-year approval in 2017, which allows the development authority to monitor the business to ensure operational compliance with the land use bylaw and the conditions of the development permit prior to considering further permits. We have not taken any enforcement action with respect to the, op the business operations. Therefore, the development authority recommends that council approve development permit D-22 292 for firewood processing and outdoor sort storage subject to the following conditions. Condition number one. Approval is granted based on the information provided by the applicant for the approved development only and no other development. The condition number two, the approved development shall be located as shown on the attached approved site plan. Condition number three, the applicant shall only operate one saw at a time in order to minimize noise impact, and the applicant shall make an effort to mitigate sound. Condition number four, operational and retail hours are limited to April 1st to October 31st, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., and then November 1st to March 31st, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. till 6 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Condition number five, approval is granted for a period of five years on or before five years from the approval date of this permit. The business shall cease to operate unless a development permit extending this time has been approved by the county. One. Thank you. The site plan shall be maintained in a neat and orderly manner, including the containment of all materials and refuse to the satisfaction of the development authority. No outdoor storage site, uh, condition number seven, no outdoor storage, site clearing, shelter belts, and fencing is permitted, including removal of natural vegetation and alterations to the natural drainage of lands within 20 meters of the White Mud Creek. Condition number eight, outdoor storage areas shall be appropriately screened from public roads. Condition number nine, no use or operation shall cause or create any significant impact or nuisance during normal operations, which in the opinion of the development authority may be objectionable beyond the boundary of the site which contains it by way by way of but not limited to the following odorous and or toxic matter dust fly ash and other particulate matter noise vibrations air pollution industrial waste water quality deterioration groundwater or quantity deterioration, glare, radiation, emissions, high brightness, light sources. Condition number 10, the applicant landowner shall provide firefighting access at all times to the satisfaction of Leduc County Fire Services. Condition number 11, the applicant shall enter into a road use agreement with the county 
the applicant must contact Public Works and Engineering prior to the movement of construction material to discuss this requirement. Condition number 12, the development shall not cause any adverse drainage impact on adjacent properties or flooding of nearby ditches in excess of their capabilities. Condition number 13, no outdoor sandblasting or spray painting of any kind shall be permitted on site. Condition number 14, the site shall be maintained in a neat and orderly manner, including the containment of all materials and refuse to the satisfaction of the development authority. Condition 15, no further development expansion or change in use is permitted unless approved by Ladue County. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have a couple of questions on the conditions, if I may. Uh, the first one uh, relates to the last point. So if the applicant was wanting to put up another fabric shed, they would. this would have to come back to County Council or would it be approved by the development permit or uh, development authority, sorry? It would be approved through County Council. It would have to come back. I noticed on the, the condition with the road use agreement, it talks about construction materials. Is that correct? Or are we talking about logs? Um, prior to the movement of construction material to discuss this requirement, number 11. Through Madam, Ch uh, Madam Chair, we could amend that condition just to say that they enter into a road use agreement for the transport of all material. Thank you. I trust that you will do that because you're trusting folk. Um, and my last question before I open up the floor for anybody else, I noticed one of the complaints was related to weed control. Is this property subject to the same standard as the rest of our agricultural um, areas or even other areas where uh, if a complaint is made, it should be made to our ag department and then they would go out and investigate or is it different because it's industrial? Through the chair, it is um, subject to the same procedure and we have advised the adjacent landowner to go through egg services. Thank you very much. Those were my first few questions. Anyone else? Councillor Smith and then Councillor Belazer. Um, during the last five year permit, uh, were there complaints lodged for the weeds, road use or anything or just uh, what was enclosed in the two letters today? Is that the only complaints you've received over the five years? Through the chair, yes, that's the only complaints we've received. And supplemental and then Councillor Bullock. And further, I've gone out to the site and bought firewood. I'm just wondering about the accuracy of two customers per day. I've been in a lineup with 10 people, so that was probably the whole week's people showed up all at once. It'd be nice if it was a little bit more accurate or they wouldn't be having people drop in at two. So I have to question whether two customers over operations of 10 hours is, is accurate information we receive, but we know that it is a busy spot. Thank you. Councillor Belazer. Yeah, I'm kind of going back to what um, the mayor's comment was on number 14. I'm looking on neat and orderly maintaining containment of all materials. Now, in one of the letters, it mentioned uh, thistles blowing in the wind. So is, is something like weed control going to be put in under number 14, containment of all materials to the site? Yes, we can definitely amend that condition to include weed control. Including weed, appropriate weed control yes. as for county regulations? Yes. Any other Thank questions? You. Madam Chair. Councillor Lewis, the floor is yours. Thank you. Two questions. Is a five-year typical for a drug control application and is this appropriate for this application? Uh, okay, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> through the mayor, um, Madam Chair. Yes, um, the previous permit was issued for uh, five years. And so that was part of the uh, reasoning for issuing another um, five-year permit. So we could continue to monitor the use of the site. Thank you. And my second, my second question is, if um, the applicants are acting outside of their permit conditions, what should residents do? Thank you. Thank you through the uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, we would encourage uh, residents to uh, report a concern so we could um, open an enforcement um, file and investigate the concern. 
and uh, that is to planning or just yes that would be to uh, Ladue County Planning and Development Services and and further to that through the chair um, being that this is a direct control permit we have the of course we can always bring the permit back to council if they are not following the conditions any other questions I had one I thought it talked about um attempting to mitigate oh there it is the noise from the saw an effort to mitigate sound what does that look like so through the chair i can speak to that with respect to the previous application that was put in place due to the saw operating outside and we asked that they actually move the saw inside a building to help mitigate noise and that's why the condition was put in place and that will occur it's occurring right now inside and that's what we would encourage to still I'll turn to Councillor Wanchuk who lives in the area have you noticed the saws inside Councillor Wanchuk he hasn't noticed it that's a good sign <laughs> thank you anything else I am seeing nothing else um, it sounds like the last five years have been fairly successful for this operation when it comes to sticking to their conditions as Councillor Smith said, there might be busier days and not busier days. Um, certainly, I appreciate uh, the comments uh, related to the road use agreement, critically important uh, with the loads going in and out, especially on our uh, roads that are, uh, especially road ban roads, when we do have our road bans in, and managing dust when it's necessarily. Councillor um, Scoby. Uh, condition 13, is, that, is there something else there? The no out, outdoor sandblasting or spray painting that doesn't seem to fit this. Uh, Has there been? <laughs> uh, this whole application. So. Through the mayor, this is um, just a standard condition um, that would be typical of a commercial industrial site. Okay, acceptable. Councilor Scobie, Councilor Smith. It seems, again, that questions that were asked were sufficiently um, discussed and positively answered. Um, there are conditions, again, that continue to control the operations. It is a business that's fairly successful. You see their products throughout uh, the area that are being sold. I use the business myself. Um, if the neighbours can live with it, I would be prepared today to move. I, and again, I just want to make a comment that there are 10 people employed there, uh, I think, which is still important. That we uh, that we do that, so, so I'd be prepared to uh, to move the development permit application D twenty two dash two nine two be approved, subject to the following uh, conditions, and I believe there are fifteen of them that was read into the record by planning and development today. With with two two changes, right? Correct. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Smith. I will support it. I'm I'm pleased that uh, out of 22 letters, only two came back. That shows that the uh, operator is working with the neighbors um, and is working to keep the business active. So any other comments or questions? All in favor. That is unanimous. If that's you guys back there, congratulations. If it's not, then... Thank you for staying for the entire meeting. <laughs> and you don't have to stay for the rest. Thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, Mr. Honesty. Thank you, uh, Kayla and uh, Ms. Haverlack. Do you have a fancy? Uh... No fancy presentation. Okay. What? Sorry. <laughs> Whenever you're ready then, sir. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, thank you. Uh, the first item uh, to present to council today is, is a follow-up from some support that council provided uh, previously last fall. Uh, we had three community uh, uh, volunteer groups come forward and request uh, conditional support of Leduc County to build playgrounds within, um, within our region. We granted conditional acceptance or conditional approval to those um, projects and then have worked through our department in Parks and Recreation to assist them and support them in being successful in receiving grants. And, and thankfully, all three were successful, 
have received um, some matching contributions from the province of Alberta and have continued to fundraise on their own as well. So all three projects uh, intend uh, to be completed this year and are working through a process uh, to do that and have kept us up to date on their progress to date as well. So we are recommending to, uh, to follow through with our conditional support, which would be $5,000 to the Warburg Parent Society, $10,000 to the Kalmar Elementary School Parent Teachers Association, and $10,000 to the Leduc Society for Christian Education. Uh, our staff will continue to work with them as they prepare for grand openings and, and want to include us with that, as well as some of the sponsored recognition that we would get for that funding as well. Thank you for that. And just to clarify, Black Gold, the school system, uh, in two of these cases that, that operate the school, they actually aren't responsible for funding playgrounds. Is that correct? They will support their volunteer groups, but they also... Um, take care of all the liability, maintenance, repairs, insurance, all that that comes with it. And, and all playgrounds are accessible to the public outside of school hours as well. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll move the recommendation that we approve the funding support allocated in the Recreation Cost Share Capital Program to the following groups, Warburg Parent Society, $5,000, Kalmar Elementary School, PTA, $10,000, Leduc Society for Christian Education, $10,000. Um, I, I know that these playgrounds are used well after school hours and during the summer uh, by grandparents such as myself that are looking for a place to take their children, as well as programs during the summer. It's a good investment in our youth to keep them occupied and um, having fun and on safe equipment. So with that, any other comments, questions or debate? Councillor Smith. Um, just want to make a comment again of how useful the playgrounds have always been. Uh, I know in New Sarepta, you can't use the playground during the school hours, but our students and our residents' children are in the schools using them uh, extensively during that time and very busy after school on weekends in that area. And I'm sure the others, so it's, this is an easy one to support. Thanks. Thank you for that comment. All in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. On to 62 special project funding, Kalmar and District Egg Society. Thank you. This is a, a follow-up to a request and a presentation uh, that was provided to council in January from the Kalmar District Agricultural Society, uh, requesting some uh, support from council, conditional support uh, to allow them to make some energy efficiency improvements uh, to their facility. Uh, they have also, uh, with that conditional support of council, have been successful in receiving their grant and uh, the required matching or the required funds that would lead to this project. So um, they have received the $64,000 and have contributed, uh, dedicated $140,000 of their own fundraising towards this project. So as we mentioned previously, when we recommended uh, conditional support, obviously this will lead to improved energy efficiency of the facility and will be a good uh, template showcase for us to be a partner with and we hope that we have many more of these energy efficiency projects to come in the future so with that we're recommending support of the project Thank you. councillor smith just process did we not just approve this in the budget and would we not just receive this information then today uh, i guess the question to administrative uh, administration yeah typically we're with the grant like this even when it is budgeted and planned similar to our other uh grants we will have that follow-up council motion uh, just to follow up and, and confirm. Okay. All right. Thank you for that clarification. And looking for someone to move the recommendation. Councillor Scobie, go ahead. I uh, recommend that council approve funding for seven thousand dollars. Calmer Egg and Calmer and District Egg Society for funding allocated from the Recreation Cost Share Capital Program. Hey, thank you. So the money is already in budget, so that's a good thing. All in favor? That is unanimous. Mr. Honesty, you need to start coming in and bringing in money, but what's your we, next one? Exactly. <laughs> 63. Uh, this one isn't a money ask. No money yet. West Antique Society. Yeah, thank you. This is a follow-up to a pre presentation that council received on March 7th. Um, from the society requesting uh, some support in a few areas. Uh, administration has reviewed uh, their requests and have suggested a few options for council to consider. Uh, obviously we work very closely with the Antique Society 
and um, support them both with some annual operating assistance, but as well as throughout uh, board development and assistance in, in being successful, which they are uh, very successful as an organization. Uh, we've identified a few options to address their concerns. Uh, the first that we would um, refer to our public works committee to look at our road program to see if there's opportunities uh, to assist with the uh, future paving of that road, or at least consider that in a long-term plan, as well as we intend to um, work and support through Parks and Recreation as well to see if maybe there are grants or other opportunities that would reduce that request through Leduc County. Uh, it could be done in some type of partnership as well, which I think um, would make it a little easier for us to uh, support in the, in the near future. And as well, um, you know, through our administration, we'll assist and support with any connectivity uh, to address their internet concerns. They identified that as a service in the area and the events that they host, they need internet access and support, um, which is obviously not available uh, feasibly at this time, but we do have connections through our administration to new uh, vendors and new opportunities that come up uh, throughout the years. So we'll, now that we know of this concern, um, we'll make sure we flag that and see if there's any opportunities we can send to them for partnership and support. So that we've provided that recommendation to council. Thank you very much. And again, um, thank you to you and your staff for, um, for lack of a better term, brokering support to organizations, be it something like Leduc West Antique Society or a community hall, certainly. We don't expect uh, the county to pay for internet access in our community halls, um, and neither are you expecting that here. It's just trying to find grant opportunities or other ways to do that. Um, as for the uh, uh, paving program, we have a policy around number of trips on a road, and then we create um, a, um, a list from that. And certainly I have no problem looking at where this sits if it even makes the threshold uh, four trips per day to be put on the paving program, because I know that's fairly high. So I think that these two actions uh, continue to show support for Leduc West Antique Society, but gives us time to try and find some, to help them find their own solutions, perhaps, to how to move forward. So uh, with that, uh, looking for someone to make a motion, Councillor Wanchuk will. All right, any comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And I think, believe that brings us to the end of our agenda. It does too, so I will adjourn at 3.09. Thank you very much. Go Oilers, go.